We're pleased now to be joined by Mike Dean from Common Cause Minnesota. He's the executive director. Welcome to the program, Mike. Thanks for having me. Uh, there's so much going on in voting and election politics, it's hard to know where to start, I think, mm -hmm. these days. But uh, it's safe to say voter ID, Citizens United, uh, the marriage amendment, redistricting, all that seems to be playing a role in the election year politics up here at the Capitol. Uh, which issue among these uh, that I just mentioned do you believe will be that kind of hot button issue, uh, or are we missing something? Well, I mean, sometimes it feels like a democracy is under attack right now with all these different uh, court decisions and different issues happening here at the Capitol. Uh, but I think one of the bigger issues is really photo ID coming forward this year. And that, I think, is really the greatest threat to our democracy because essentially you're going to see it really disenfranchise, I think, a lot of people. Uh, there was sort of some interesting news that came out of last week's hearing where the Secretary of State's office released a report identifying over 215,000 individuals that are currently registered to vote in the state that essentially would be disenfranchised if this law went into effect. And so I think that's really the greatest threat and the most concern right now. Now, there was a huge, I, I can't sort of walked by, a huge line for people to get into the hearing. It was downstairs in the basement. What, what were just regular citizens saying at the hearing? Well, I, I think they're very much concerned about the issue of them being disenfranchised. You've heard from a variety of individuals, seniors coming forward who no longer drive and uh, who essentially you know, would make it very difficult for them to vote. You also heard of new immigrants that have moved to this country uh, and didn't have the right to vote in their homeland, now have become U.S. citizens, and they don't have birth certificates in this country. So it's very difficult for them to prove who they are. And so I think there's lots of concerns about the barriers that are being created here. And I think the issue is, why are we really moving forward with something like this? Uh, when we talk about voter fraud, I think it really is important to realize what voter fraud really is in this state. Voter fraud is very rarely somebody coming in and impersonating another individual. Uh, what you often see is what actually just happened in Indiana, where the Secretary of State was convicted of voter fraud, uh, a state where this photo ID is modeled after, where they're saying, you know, this is the model of what we're supposed to look like, and their voter fraud is happening, uh, because you have a Secretary of State who essentially lied uh, in terms of where he lived and committed fraud, voter fraud as a result of that. But oftentimes it's much worse than that. In a state like Maryland, where essentially you had a campaign manager for one of the candidates who sent in robocalls into 100,000 uh, people in a minority community encouraging them not to vote. I mean, that's what voter fraud is, is really discouraging people to vote in that sort of large scale. And it doesn't happen at this individual level uh, that the proponents of this ID law are, are making. Did, 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 I believe that Secretary of State in Indiana said that he inadvertently used his ex-wife's address. He didn't vote twice. He just used the wrong address. Correct. correct? But yeah. he did not live there, and that is voter so fraud. So technically, he, he committed a fraud. Correct, okay. but then this is also the chief elections manager of the state. And you so if he's he out there- I hope he'd get that right. Well, I think he'd have that <laughs> He's part supposed to understand the law. Right. No, and, admittedly, yes. And if he can't, right. you know, doesn't understand, and he's committing fraud, right. are there other problems that exist there? And I think we have to be greatly concerned about it. But again, that's yeah. what voter fraud is. That's the face of voter fraud. It's not an elderly woman. It's not a military vet uh, who doesn't have an ID. It's not uh, somebody from the minority community. And I think we need to really sort of rethink what that is. But you have a big job ahead of you getting out your message because polls have said that majority of Minnesotans support this idea. It, I mean, it, it seems like a good idea. Why not show my ID? Well, and I think that's the greatest challenge is a lot of people have IDs in the state, um, you know, to drive, to, to go anywhere. But we have to remember that elections are for everyone. It's not just for those of us that have ID, and that's the problem with this law. And so, yes, we have a job to convince people uh, of this. And I think that there is a huge education gap that needs to happen because also when they check an ID, they're actually checking the information on there. You know, when I bring in my ID to go buy a beer, they don't check to make sure my address is correct. They don't make sure that my name is spelled exactly correct. But when you're voting, they're doing exactly that. And so the issue is, is that you're actually going to see a lot of people disenfranchised because of this that don't think they're going to be negatively impacted, but because of the checking that goes on as a result of this, that they're going to run into significant problems on Election Day. And that's our job is to educate people that they are going to be, a lot of people are and, going to be impacted and by And hang this. on a second, but driving is a, a privilege, I think, and voting is supposed to be a right. So one you need a license for, and the other one you, you haven't needed it up to this point in this state. Well, and that's the unfortunate line of thinking that exists behind this law, is the idea that voting is a privilege in the state. And, and as you rightly corrected, it's not. I mean, we have the Voting Rights Act. There are many pieces in federal law that say that voting uh, is a right and should be protected. And unfortunately, it appears that some groups are trying to take that right away right now.